What's up, Foot Clan? Happy Monday. You know what that means. We kick things off with a little bit of sophistication, a whole bunch of news, break down some of these matchups, the studs and the duds. Subscribe to this channel, like the video, and enjoy. As fall transitions to winter, there's nothing better than cozying up with a comforting home-cooked meal, especially when HelloFresh makes it so easy. Get up to 14 free meals plus three free gifts with the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And Folkland, we deserve to know what we're putting in our bodies and why, especially when it comes to something that you take every day. That's where Ritual comes into play. They're clean, vegan-friendly multivitamin. It's formulated with high-quality nutrients in bioavailable forms your body can actually use. What you will not find? Sugars, GMOs, major allergens, synthetic fillers, artificial colorants. Plus, the fresh taste and delayed re release capsule design makes taking your vitamins easy. I have uh, personal experience with the Ritual vitamins, and when they talk about the fresh taste, they are not joking. It is... It is a uh, very strange sensation where you're like, oh, I get to take my vitamin instead of dreading it because you just pop it in, you get, you get a little fresh minty aftertaste, uh, unlike a lot of the other things on the market it, because it's a multivitamin reimagined and Ritual is made traceable. You always know what nutrients you're taking and where they come from thanks to Ritual's one-of-a-kind visible supply chain. Ritual makes healthy habits easy. Your multivitamins are delivered to your door every month with free shipping and you can start, snooze, or cancel your subscription anytime. And if you don't love Ritual within your first month, they'll refund your first order. Get key nutrients without the BS. Ritual is offering our listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash footballers to start your ritual today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Just grunting over here. Don't mind me. The grunts <laughs> made me expect and want the football time. Not today. I don't like what you did to my soul there, Mike. You got to leave the people wanting. Get them pumped up. For I'm, this. I'm wanting. I'm pumped. Look how pumped up I am. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> so you ready for Thursday's show? Yes, I am. <laughs> Anticipation <laughs> for what? Week 14? My goodness. <clears throat> Welcome into the show, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Andy, Mike, and Jason. It's Monday, December 6th. Supposedly, they're going to play football tonight through a, what, rainstorm? Yeah, is there a typhoon? I, is there a hurricane? I think right now they're not sure how much is going to be rain versus sleet versus snow. There will be some things possibly in the air, but I know there will be a lot of air moving fast. <laughs> they're talking about 30 mile an hour winds, cold below freezing temperatures. It is going to just be a delight between two powerful defenses punching each other in the face. Well, the, they won't be punching each other because right. the defense will be facing the other team's offense. Of course. Right. Yeah, the defense has never really faced off. That mm. would be something. That, that would be awesome. Probably low scoring. Hit the under. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about today. Yeah, we had a – look, we've had a couple down weeks in terms of fantasy scoring, but not yesterday. Holy crap, the touchdowns were flying fast and furious. It was a really fun Sunday. It was, and uh, Al is likely going to defeat me in our league of record, but we had, like Mike said, we had the first half going on, and it was like Herbert and Brady. It's like touchdown, touchdown, touchdown. It's Brady and Herbert. 30 <laughs> points by each guy by halftime, and um, there were some uh, heavyweight boxing matches yesterday between fantasy players. We did go out there on this very exciting weekend and ask the Foot Clan to supply us with some sophisticated content. Um, <laughs> so let's get to some Monday Punday reactions to the weekend. I will kick it off. Gorgeous Kittle. <laughs> yes. Oh, is that Josh Jacobs? We've uh, also got Travis D. Kelsey. Oh, and Darn Mooney. Darn Mooney. <laughs> oh. Derek Barf. <laughs> that was very sophisticated. <laughs> Send in the Barf. Gardner Manshu. Oh, yes. Dallas P. 
pay dirt. Oh, there's my guy, T.D. Higgins. And then uh, hopefully you didn't start Lack Ertz. Oh, I'm sorry. But Javante will... Yums. <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> oh, Gerald Neverett. And uh, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, T.Y. Houston. We have a problem. We have a problem. <laughs> oh. Oh. I just knew it in my heart that T.Y. wasn't going to do it this week. I knew it all week long, and I just... Played him. <laughs> I played him, and I told you I'm going to blame you for that. Oh, I'll, I'll, I will accept the blame. Um, but also, I share it with... T.Y. Hilton. Yeah. He also is responsible but for like, his like performance. 70 30 you. 70 30 me for sure. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe like 5% should go to Jonathan Taylor somewhere. Yeah. Um, okay. Because that boy good. <laughs> he is so good. It's unbelievable. He's so fun to watch, yes. too. Because it, it was like watching Adrian Peterson in his heyday, where mm -hmm. he's just always going so fast and yet evading tackles, but it doesn't. It's weird. It's like he's not really making giant cuts. He's just barely moving and getting out of the way while you hit him and bounce off of him, but it doesn't slow him down. It's just a pleasure. It's funny you make that comparison because yesterday Adrian Peterson was also barely moving. <laughs> yeah, wow. That's true. And I love that it's, it's comparing him to Adrian Peterson, who's still somehow playing football. I'm sorry, Adrian. We love you, but he almost you're, had, very, just, you're very slow. He almost had two touchdowns. Yeah, he might I, be the goal line back for the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, he has to be. And right? how in the world does does Pete Carroll not connect that victory with the signing, the majestic signing of Adrian Peterson? There's no way that that's not galaxy brain moment where you right. go, I did it. This is what it took. <laughs> we needed it. Um, you can find our community of listeners at jointhefoot.com. I, I posted something this morning with some reflections on the last seven years of this show. And uh, you can check that out. There's some there's some funny pictures in there too, from uh, our tour going all the way back to the early days. So oh those are goodness. those are fun to reflect on. Why did we share this publicly? I know, <laughs> I know. I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, TheFantasyFootballers.com is the website. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league, presented by Sleeper. Jalen Hurts did not play high ankle sprain, expected to be back after the week 14 bye. So him missing this game gave him an extra couple of weeks off. That being said, victory for Gardner. It and, was. And uh, I know we expect Jalen to be back out there. Does Gardner's performance do anything for his future in terms of? I think it helps him get a backup job you know, a higher paying backup job in the future. He, you know, people had a chance to trade for him. He, he, he netted a sixth round pick. Um, so I'm, I, I don't think this changes anything drastically going forward. He played fantastic. He looked great. And then you remember it was the jets. Yes, so you, can't, it was. you can't get a little too overhyped, but there's, there's other backups out there. Like, uh, what Tim Boyle. I mean, there's, there's guys out there that are getting starts because they are the backup quarterback. That should not be. And Gardner, maybe he's not a franchise quarterback, but he's good. Like he's he, good enough to win. He's, he's in the Taylor Heineke, right? Yeah, I would. I put him in that area. Certainly. Yeah, yeah, and I think he could start for certain teams. And I think that if you have a quarterback that might be a mobile quarterback, higher risk of injury, he's kind of a high priority backup. Trey Sermon exited, or I'm sorry, Trey Sermon was placed on injured reserve. Mm -hmm. Jeff Wilson exited. Uh, with an unspecified injury. So, man, we, it looked like we lost Elijah Mitchell there for a second, too. It did. And uh, you saw some Jermichael Hasty on the field. So, uh, you know, depending on the severity of this injury, it might be time to cut bait on Jeff Wilson, and it never yeah, really worked. It probably out. is. Daniel Jones, uh, going to be out for multiple weeks. That's the expectation, according to Ian Rappaport. It's interesting. The the timeline here because early in the week it was like yeah he's not going to be able to play he was listed as doubtful officially and then it was positive it was like no I, I think he's going to be active and I I wonder if something happened to um, aggravate the injury make it worse because now we're talking multiple weeks so hopefully it's uh, a health thing in the meantime it is not good for the offense to have Mike Glennon let well me, let me read the defenses that play the New York Giants over the next few weeks in case you're interested Chargers next week December 12th then it's the Cowboys defense. Then the day after Christmas, it's the Eagles defense. 
And then the uh, second to last game is the Bears. So these need to enter your radar if it's going. Mike, Mike Glennon has a concussion. That's what I was going to say. Is what well, they they might be without Mike Glennon and the latest depth chart that I am finding. If next man up would be Jake from State Farm. Oh really? Oh, really? Yeah. He's the next man. I up. guess I didn't realize he was there. Hmm. But I'm looking at our lads and. They have Jake Fromm. Did the... they just trade a first for Gardner? Is that what? You... <laughs> uh, Big Ben, this was reported that he privately expressed that it'll be the final year. He's also publicly expressed it on the field. Um, oh, man. But final but year in Pittsburgh. To be fair, he's done that a few years yeah, in a row. I was going to say, he publicly expressed that like three years ago. He kept playing. They won. And they won. He, and at, he played. He act, He was he, fine. He yesterday. had a better game than we've seen in a while. Yeah. But, but it is likely this team moves forward, moves on. We kind of expected it, so I don't think it changes dynasty. Mike certainly expects it. He believe, I do. He he knows the future quarterback is Aaron Rodgers. That is correct. I just don't see it. I just don't see the Steelers making that happen. Where is it going? Where's Rodgers going? I don't know. He mm. might be staying right home. He could. Maybe, uh, maybe. I don't. He's a he's a man that holds a grudge. Yeah, that's true. Joe Burrow, uh, so did the Packers, I think, in this situation. Uh, Joe Burrow suffered a finger injury early in the game. It was swollen. He played through it. Adam Thielen, high ankle sprain, going to miss multiple weeks, it seems like. We'll find out later this week. Miles Sanders exited early after re-injuring the ankle, same ankle that made him go on IR. We may not see him again this year. Ah, crap. is not fair. He was having a great game against the Jets. He looked like a great play. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those... One of those injuries that is, you know, it was it just wasn't his fault. Not that no. any of these injuries really are someone's fault, but I just feel bad for the guy. When you get that injury-prone label and, you know, maybe you're non-contact and you're pulling stuff left, right, and center, and it's like, okay, maybe it's not your fault, but your body's not ready for football. This was just, you know, he got his leg kind of – if Jake Fromm doesn't make you excited about the uh, starting and opposing defense, uh, Kenny Galladay forced out of the game, so when Shepard and Kadarius Tony didn't play, they are down to scraps in New York. Kenyon Drake broke his ankle. He will miss yeah. the rest of the season for the Raiders. Unfortunate. And uh, this one, very sad as well. Logan Thomas likely tore his ACL and MCL after giving you a great game. Big touchdown catch was going to play a role for the rest Maybe. of the year in a big way. He was going to play a huge role. Uh, we're very happy for for Logan that he he got the bag before this season because this is going to be a very difficult injury to come back from. Yeah, it's probably a career ender just based on age and severity of injury. It's it's late in the season, so who knows how early he could get back next year. And then the, you're talking 2023, he's not a spring, he's a spring chicken. chicken, as they say. Corey Davis, Ryan Griffin exited early. Ronald Jones exited the game due to an illness. Tyrod Taylor, possible hyperextended wrist. You saw Davis Mills. Yeah. They reported that it was not due to injury when when they when they benched him. Are you who's they? Uh the the sideline the, the reporter. The broadcast. The broadcast. Team. Yeah, the the alert that went out also said just benched, but it makes more sense to me just with the kind of commitment they have to him that there was a problem. He looked bad. Well, both Tyrod Taylor and General Mills scored the same amount of points, <laughs> which was zero. Wow. That's fair. Uh, and then we'll be monitoring Joe Mixon and Chris Godwin and Jalen Waddle, who had uh, some minor injuries, just in case something is more severe. Monday night game tonight. The update is just that it's going to be a weathery game. I mm -hmm. mean, this is two the, the two best defenses, I would say, in football. Um you know, it's the first time we're going to see Buffalo without Tredavious White for a full game, but and the it should be a battle. I mean, are so fun. You're talking about if the Patriots win, they are alone at the top. They are the number one seed. If the Patriots lose, I think the difference between the first seed and the thirteenth is two and a half games. It's outrageous the parity right now um, in the AFC, and it's awesome. It's super fun. Uh, anything else, Brooksy, that you got for us? That's it for now. How are you doing today? Pretty you good. A nice, nice Monday morning. <laughs> yeah, not you've, too bad. You've been wearing the Christmas hat. You're in the Christmas spirit fully. Yeah. Did you get any time. lights up on the house yet? No, not on the house yet. Mm. Got okay. the tree up. Okay. Oh, nice. 
I recommend nice. the uh, just like the the nets for over the bushes, over the yeah. bushes and stuff. The nets, They're on the, the way. nets are wonderful. It's, it's just it's a it's a low impact way for those of us who are far too cowardly to get on the ladder and hang lights on the roof. Yeah, Mike just throw, Mike just throws nets up on the second story. <laughs> he just throws them up <laughs> there like he's catching a couple fish. squares up on the roof, just <laughs> sparkling up there. Uh, you're not going up to the second story, are you, Brooks? No, no, no. Okay, that's in your contract. You can't do that. What about the third story, Brooks? Oh, okay. <laughs> good, good question. Good question. <laughs> nice well, he'll take the team. elevator up there. But his yeah. team will take care of his lights. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to hang lights on a castle. I will say that. Uh, that was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Download the Sleeper app and join their breaking alerts channel. You'll know everything that is going on. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Well, it was everybody. All right, that's yeah. it for the show today. Yeah, I mean, it, I I scored our head-to-head uh, DraftKings where oh man, one of you oh, lost that by story. A, a point, uh, but I sorry scored, less than a point, less than a point. I scored a uh. hundred and ninety points, and I I had that lineup in the the Millie Maker. I I didn't crack the top five thousand lineups with a hundred and ninety points. That's crazy. Yeah, it was it was wild. I I love that your lineup was filled with you know flames, you know. And then Jonathan Taylor wasn't one. <laughs> he was so Even expensive. though he was 20, whatever. His Yeah, his points were expected. Kyler Murray, welcome back. 123 passing yards, ends up with a huge fantasy day. Very efficient. Third. <laughs> the ankle is fine. <laughs> third most fantasy points ever for a quarterback with 15 or fewer pass attempts. Cardinals defense caused forced multiple turnovers, which meant short fields. Um, you had the rushing yardage, 10 for 59 and two on the ground. That was the most of the year. Yeah, he looked great. Uh, Tom Brady, 38 for 51, 368 and four. Ho-hum, he destroys the Falcons. Justin Herbert matched him pretty much, 26 for 35, 317 and three. He's on fire right now. Quarterback two, 15, one, six and three over the last five weeks. Gets the Giants, the Chiefs, and the Texans for the next three weeks. Okay. Th- that'll be He's interesting. He's also the quarterback two on the year. Like, you have to look at him going into next season in a completely different lens than you did coming in. Yeah, he is He is unstoppable. He's great. But the Giants and the Kansas City Chiefs, those are defenses coming up where it sounds great on paper because on the year they've been bad, but lately they've they've been pretty darn good. And we do know that the offense for the Chargers seems to turn off every once in a while. Uh, Matthew Stafford. 295 and three back on track against Jacksonville. They, good, that's their good. purpose in the league is to get you back on track and Arizona next week. The Arizona game is the Monday night football game. I know you are both going to be there, right? Yes, mm-hmm. sir. And uh, I believe with a victory, the Cardinals will clinch the division. Nice. Either that or we'll make it like a, uh, I think it might be magic number of one or something like that. Gotcha. I know so, that if we win, we'll be the best team record wise in the NFL. Like we are now. Oh, that's right. We are. We will continue to. We be. Jason, continue were you? To be. Did you have breaking news you were about to hit? Or well, what? I was. I just had a button with this next name on the, uh, on the list. What? Zach Wilson. What? <laughs> twenty three for thirty eight, two twenty six and two. Good also for you, Also had a man. rushing touchdown. He also gave Elijah Moore a good fantasy game. Or did Elijah Moore help give Zach Wilson a good fantasy game? Because Elijah Moore has been outstanding. Mm-hmm. He Let's is, give them both credit. Yeah, sh- sure. But, I mean, you, you think about the rookie wide receivers this year. It's been a good year. Jamar Chase has gotten a ton of publicity. Uh, Devonta Smith has been great. And then Jalen Waddle's starting to get the respect he's due. But quietly, Elijah Moore has shown out. Yeah, I was stuck on the part where you said Devonta Smith's yeah, been great when I only got two he's points been from him. Up and down, but Elijah Moore is is on fire right now. Kirk Cousins, Jason start of the week. Uh they let him cook. Three forty and two. And uh it's still gonna be a little bit like normally when you lose a big receiver, like the offense kind of slowed down. It looked bad. And then he got it together because you can throw the ball twice as much to Justin Jefferson if yes, you want you can. to. You're allowed to do that and it just doesn't the defense can't stop him. Jared Goff ended up with two ninety six and three. Big Ben two thirty six and two. Oh well, Jared Goff also ended up with the game winner, a W. Yeah, congratulations, Detroit. Jared Gear. Congratulations, you will not be winless. If you watch, <laughs> thank you. If you watch the sideline video of Dan Campbell, who I love, 
And when that touchdown happened, it's the jubilation and joy in this first time coach getting the first dub. It was overwhelming. And there was this moment, I think, where they inexplicably went for it on fourth down in their own territory. Yeah, it was a little strange. Where Jason was like, that play was to get the pick. (laughs) And then the way they drove down and won the game and the jubilation showed me that that just wasn't the case. I think they were just trying to. They're being very, very aggressive on that fourth down. Running back, studs. Oh, yes, sir. He is who we thought he was. I'm so happy (laughs) that it happened because we've been saying it's going to happen. And then he had the opportunity to make it happen. And then it happened. Javante's Inferno, it was. 23 for 102. The big one was 6 for 76 and a touchdown through the air. Yes, sir. This is Javante Williams, running back rookie for the uh, (laughs) Denver Broncos. Broncos. Yeah, he was going to, and he has Detroit next week. Oh, brother. Uh, Get healthy, Melvin. This was the first opportunity. Yeah, like uh, rest. Oh, oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, that came across much more like get healthy for the Detroit matchup. No, no, no. no. Yeah, no, 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 like, no, no, no. Which Melvin, he, he may be. Full, no, no, like he probably is fully, shh, 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 shh. fully recover, man. Yeah. Like come back one hundred and ten. Think of your future. <laughs> You've had a good year. You want a contract? Don't get hurt this year. It's amazing because the I know how you know we're we're very vocal about you know don't go tag players. Don't go make you know make light of these injuries on social media to right. the players. I I don't envy being Melvin Gordon because no. there is no question. First of all, there's no question based on his his tweeting history that he follows his own name, and second of all, when he's not tagged, and second of all, not everyone shares the convictions we do about that. And he's been great. He's been a wonderful running back. In fact. If he plays next week, he's a start against Detroit. 100%. So it's one of those things where if Javante is a – the debate will be where he goes next year because in fantasy drafts because you know that Henry and you know Taylor and McCaffrey and Cook will be in the conversation. And where will the jump be for Javante? Just depends on if they bring in another back to continue a timeshare, and that's the 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 – strategy they want to employ or if they let him be the guy personnel wise because if he's the guy personnel wise if they let Melvin Gordon go and they don't really re-sign anyone but maybe a a veteran to add depth on the roster then he'll be like the sixth pick in the draft but he had a he had a big week and it was exciting to see unfortunately didn't lead to a victory for the Broncos but uh, he was their their lone bright star on the team before we get into the rest of the running back studs we do want to thank today's sponsors including hello fresh hello fresh you know the story. Fresh, pre-measured ingredients, mouth-watering, seasonal recipes delivered right to your door. They don't leave them in the middle of the street. They take them all the way to your door. Mm-hmm. Uh, skip the trip to the grocery store. Count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. I think that's the thing people don't understand about HelloFresh and the meal delivery is that it's actually more affordable. That's why they're the number one kit because you get the exact portioned ingredients you don't go to the store and buy the wrong proportions and then have all the prep time and you end up spending less money overall it is essentially a can't beat value 30 percent cheaper than grocery stores and with this holiday deal it is time to try it out for even less they give you flexibility you can customize your order on the app it's the whole package go to hellofresh.com slash footballers 14 use the code footballers 14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. I don't know what those gifts are. I haven't gotten the gifts. They haven't sent me the gifts, but you mm. get them. Once again, that's... I believe it's frankincense, myrrh, oh, and something and gold. else. Gold. I'm, not, I'm yeah. not sure. I cannot confirm that. Uh, once again, that's HelloFresh.com slash footballers14. Use the code footballers14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. And Footland, more than 50 million men in the U.S. suffer from male pattern baldness. You may be one of them. In fact, two out of every three men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they are 35. And there are two FDA-approved medications that can prevent hair loss. And Keeps offers both of them. Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keeps that hair. It's easy. It's a virtual doctor consultation 
you know, right on your phone. Medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't have to leave your home. It's in discreet packaging. You don't have to be embarrassed about anything. And it's low cost. Treatments start as low as $10 per month and keeps offers generic versions. They have more five-star reviews than any of their competitors, and prevention is key. Treatments could take four to six months to see results, so act fast. If you're ready to take action and prevent that hair loss, go to keeps.com slash footballers to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps.com slash footballers to get that first month free. K-E-E-P-S dot com slash footballers. I believe you've met my fitness consigliere, Michel. Sonny Michelle, 24 for 121 and 1. It was a perfect situation for Sony. He's the, what, running back four in the week right now? David Montgomery, a monster week as well. That was nice to see because it had been a while. And he went 21 for 90 on the ground, had a touchdown, nine targets, eight for 51. At, at one point early in the game, he had, I believe, 80 of their uh, rounding errors here, but it was like 80 of their 100 total yards. He was their offense and against a, a tough matchup. So it was great to see. Jonathan Taylor, of course, was great. 32 for 143 and two against Houston has he, the bye. So he won't perform. Oh, that's next disappointing. Week. We found a way to stop him. Uh, he has scored a rushing touchdown in 10 straight weeks. And he does it that re is, real quick. He gets it out of the way early. That the is first so one. ridiculous, man. Alexander Madison continues yeah, to baby. thrive when he has the opportunity. Detroit also helps. 22 for 90 and one. Three targets, three for 34. Uh, was the start of the week. He's been the RB7, RB9, and RB5 in his three starts without Dalvin Cook. Pretty great. Are you super confident going forward next week against Pittsburgh? More, yes. Much more difficult matchup. Super confident, no. Must start, yeah. Okay. I'm super confident in the volume. Yeah. It won't be as productive. Most likely. Speaking of volume, turn and, it up. Antonio, yeah. get some. 23 <laughs> yeah. for 88, six targets, five for 23 and a touchdown. It's all about those opportunities for Gibson. No J.D. McKissick this week. And since the bye, 26, 19, 36, 29 opportunities. Dallas next week, four-game winning streak. It is not a coincidence that Antonio Gibson – and those wins, they come together. It's, yes. a, it's chicken or egg a little bit, like we've talked about with Josh Jacobs and their success. Gibson, on the field, when they're winning or when it's close, you're going to get prolific production. So, head coach, just keep them on the field <laughs> just more. Just keep winning. Uh, Josh Jacobs, 13 <laughs> yeah. for 52 and one. Nine targets, nine catches. And Kenyon Drake's injury really means that Josh Jacobs has a higher – floor than he has had previous in the year and previously. his floor has been very high mm -hmm. we we talked about it a lot this last week how consistent he's been how he's just not I think he's had what one or two bad games the whole season um these are all fun stories every week with Josh Jacobs and Joe Mixon yeah who were both my guys last year yeah it's uh great yeah great why'd picks. you get that so wrong yeah 85 reception pace since week eight for Josh Jacobs I Almost like you wanted to see. Is that how close is that to the Gruden departure? Uh, well, I mean, let me or the Rugs injury. I mean, yeah, it's I all together. Rugs and Darren Waller yeah, being that's gone. Right. Yep. This is why Hunter Renfro's been awesome and super involved, and it's also why Josh Jacobs is very involved. They they, they need targets to throw the ball to. Yeah, it's definitely more consistent now. But they were he was he was still getting some receptions at the beginning of the year. Well, guys, let's talk about the reception leader at the running back position, known for his <laughs> Is he seriously? receiving prowess. Leonard Fournette, 7 for 48 and a touchdown. It is When you watch the game, it's always there. It is always there. Brady could do it every play. They have to go defend Gronk downfield and Godwin and Evans. Every single play, if he wanted to throw the ball to Leonard Fournette, he could. And the trust is there. So Fournette is a stud rest of season. Much, yep, much to is. my chagrin. He, he's popped me in the mouth two weeks in a row in fantasy. I mean, last week, Brooks used him to beat me over the head, and this week, Jeremy used him. Three horrible. So you're both fired, obviously. Yeah, I mean, pack your things. Three horrible matchups coming up. Buffalo, New Orleans, Carolina. It's as bad as it gets. It doesn't matter because of what you just said. They can throw the ball to him so much that – if he doesn't have – if he has 50 rushing yards or 44 rushing yards, he probably still has a fine fantasy game when he adds another 40 with six or seven receptions. Mm -hmm. 
And to close it out at running back, Devontae Freeman and James Conner keep doing it. 20 for 75 for Conner with the touchdown through the air. He's got, what, 13 of them on the year. He's the running back five since week three. And Arizona continues to win football games. Now, Dude. Chase Edmonds will be back this coming week. He's expected week 14. He's, he'll he's be eligible. Back, yes. And he's expected back. You know, this last week, you basically saw it was, I think, 80, 80 to 20 to Eno Benjamin. This has been the James Conner show. So I was talking to Andy. I'm really curious. James Conner has earned his role as the true RB1 for this team. I mean, he has made everyone a believer, uh, you know, even the naysayers. So it will be interesting when Chase Edmonds comes back. He'll be involved. He's too good a weapon to not integrate into the offense. But I think it will be like I'm not afraid of James Conner when Chase Edmonds comes back. Whereas before the Chase Edmonds injury, if you remember, it was like we weren't sure you could start James Conner. Well, you, yeah, I think you the just bigger, were counting on that rushing touchdown. Bigger question will be, can you start Chase Edmonds? Because he's been one of the best yards per touch players in football. He's averaging 5.7 a carry this year. Like, I think he will go right back into 10 to 12 opportunities. Yeah, he he will, but he just – and he's been fine, uh, but ceiling has – it's not there for him because even – at the beginning of the year, it was James Conner's role at the goal line. And so Edmonds just – he gets you some yardage, but he, he will never have – or not never, but the probability of him, him having one of those spike weeks where Chase Edmonds, you look at your roster and he won a week for you, that doesn't seem very likely. No, and he hasn't even done that this year, really. His highest finish on any week was 13 even before the injury. Uh, wide receiver studs. Justin Jefferson, 11 for 182. And he's it seems, very good. It's casual. It's like walking down the street for him. It's, it, it's the most – he's so fluid. He's so good. And um, it does seem like if you had to bet on a player having a 200-yard game, he would be the guy to put your money on. Just yardage just eats it up. Second most uh, receiving yards ever through the first 28 games. All I ask, Justin, is that you do not burn too bright. Don't burn too bright. I look at the list of those. What are you? Do you worry about him flying too close to the sun? Yeah, a little Icarus situation here. You have Odell Beckham is the only player ahead of him. He burned too bright. He got too hot, too close to the sun. And then you got Randy Moss. Do what Randy Moss did. I say Randy Moss was fine. Because then you got Josh <laughs> Gordon right after that. Yeah. Victor Cruz. Victor, exactly. This is not a. Oh, my gosh. Don't burn too bright. The beginning of Victor Cruz's career. That was awesome. Dance. That was so much fun. Deontay Johnson did basically nothing in the first half. Ends up eight for 105 and two. Wide receiver nine on the year. One of my favorite players to have on my fantasy team. I was lamenting the, you know, I had him in our, our DraftKings lineup. I was like, where's this super consistent Deontay Johnson? He's not even involved. So he's, <laughs> let me said, hold on. Hold let on. me take you behind the curtain. I mean, yesterday we're doing the, we have our DraftKings face off, which has become. I mean, none of us want the shame. No. And it, so it's become something we very much focus on, not only in the preparation of the lineups, but during the Sundays. Like, we are following this closely. You can get a gauge. You know, there's crossover. Some of us have the same players. Some have different. And, and Jason and I are blowing Mike out. I mean, it's yes. It's just it's over. It seems we both had Brady. And then, I don't know, about halfway through the second games, Jason had pulled away from me a little bit. And I said to Mike, I go, I'm looking at the lineup. I go, I think you can catch me. I think you can get, I think you can get there. And Mike, oh, no, no, no. And sure enough, it comes down to essentially Deontay Johnson as the last man standing. And he's on Mike's team, and I don't have him, and I have my set amount of points pretty much. We both had Brandon Ayuk, so it didn't matter what he did. Mm -hmm. And we're getting to this point at the very end of that game when the, if Deontay the, scores a touchdown. The Steelers are driving. Yeah. We're, we're to the point where Mike's counting yards, where yeah. it's like, if he gets a touchdown from here, I'll win. If they get too many yards, I won't. And so, essentially, Deontay scores the touchdown, but it's just a little bit too close to the goal line. So, Mike is down. I think it was it was, it, it was an offsides penalty. That moved the ball that, around? I believe if I if, – Yeah, I moved the ball forward because the, the Ravens got offsides. They so, got a couple yards, so I will I lost – 
Barring a stack correction, and I'm going to keep my eyes open, uh, but I will lose by point eight. Well, then it got to the two-point conversion, too, and we're just yes. watching that one play for the shame. Yes. Anyways, it was exciting. Deontay was great. T. Higgins was great as well. Nine for 138 and one. Spin, you know, he, he heard he heard the show that he wasn't, he wasn't doing it this year, and then he decided to make up for it in, like, two games. Yeah. I mean, he's, his... Two blow-up games in a row. The touchdown reception... Was his boss? That was a man out there doing work, and he was playing through. I feel like he was injured every single play, uh, but two top five performances. And like I said before the bye, he was he was doing a lot of work. He just wasn't getting touchdowns. Sixty two yards, ninety seven yards, seventy eight yards. This is not a two game trend. He's a very good wide receiver. He's being targeted. Um, I I'm I'm going to start relying on him. And uh big, big week. Cooper Cup, eight for one twenty nine and one. Chris Godwin. Holy crap, man. Fifteen for <laughs> that's just the is that the official commentary yeah. on the fifteen for one forty three. Fifteen receptions. So most of the year, I think, of any single player. It was the most of any Buccaneer of all time. Was it? Yeah. Because is that because it was fifteen? Yes, yeah, because people don't usually get fifteen recept. I mean, they it do over like, like three weeks. <laughs> so that's four games. He didn't even score a touchdown. Oh. Pathetic week for Godwin. Start of the week. Uh, Keenan Allen eight targets, five for thirty four and two. I mean, so it was a look, weird weird week for him. But when I was talking to Keenan Allen last week about the touchdowns, uh, I also I I think he got confused because what I meant was touchdowns but also all of the receptions and the yards you it wasn't a one or the other situation <laughs> you weren't looking for a trade no you still could have gone like you know eight for 95 and two but i mean i you know whatever i won't be picky five five thirty four and two <laughs> it was a still it's a very good game uh you had a surprisingly huge game from amon ross st brown 12 targets 10 for 86 and the game winning touchdown i'll say not super surprising for the fact that when we were talking about the Lions, like the Minnesota secondary is just bad, that you knew somebody would have a good game. And Josh Reynolds actually had an okay game mm -hmm. as well. If you picked him up, you were very happy with the production you got. But St. Brown was the one who came through with the big game. Yeah, Josh Reynolds was seven targets, four for 69. Pretty nice. All right, Tyler Lockett, seven for 68 and a touchdown. Russell Gage, he was... He tr he tried to Godwin. He was active, man. Eleven for one thirty. Seems like on most plays, it was just don't get sacked and throw it to Gage. I mean, they were, he was just dying in the pocket. Elijah Moore, you love to see at six for seventy seven and one. We talked about it earlier, but what if I told you he was the wide receiver two since week eight? I'd believe it. Yeah, I mean, he's he's every single week getting it done. I mean, even even last week against Houston. Um, it, 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 he wasn't great, but he didn't goose you. He is involved, right. and his talent is what matters here. There's a reason he was drafted so high. He is, he is lightning in a bottle. And he's he's the number one wide receiver. They throw the ball to the wide receiver position more than almost any team in football. So there are a lot of opportunities every week, no matter who's quarterback, no matter what the game script is, which is always them down. And uh, it's it means good things for Elijah Moore, and they continue to go to him. George Kittle. Oh, brother. Welcome back. Nine for 181 and two. It was the first touchdown he's caught against Seattle, and then it was the second touchdown he caught against Seattle. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, since week nine, tight end two, five, five, 38 and one. And, so. I mean, this is one where if you had him, you you win. He wins you yes. a week. At the tight end position to have that level of, uh, you know, a game, it's just, it's, there's not, how many, how many tight ends can do that? Two? If you played Dallas Goddard Three. against him, you might have survived because Goddard was six for 105 and two, Jason's start of the week. It was a ceiling game for Goddard, and it's not a coincidence in my mind that it, yeah, I agree. it was Gardner Minshew. Mm -hmm. This team was not throwing the ball in the middle of the field ever. And yep. here comes Gardner Minshew and deleting Devontae Smith and giving everything to Dallas Goddard. Yep. Different quarterbacks have different tendencies and – his was go to Dallas Goddard, which is it's a good tendency. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we've been surprised at the the lack of production from Dallas Goddard, who just received the bag like oh, what like a month ago or the so. Talent wise, raw talent, Dallas Goddard should be great. Yes, and then uh, you have Rob oh, Gronkowski. Gronk, Gronk, 
Gronk, Gronk. Eight <laughs> targets, four for 58 and two. Oh, man. He keeps getting it done. Yep. And one of my biggest fantasy regrets this year was not acquiring him on return because I had I had the impulse to do so in several leagues. And it would have been cheap. And I had the fear that, well, we saw only a few games. I mean, points per game on the year, he may end up in the uh, top two. Mm -hmm. Hawkinson, four for 49, gave yeah. me a, another touchdown, two straight weeks with a touchdown. And uh, Logan Thomas, Mike's start of the week, ended up three for 48 and a touchdown. Yeah. Oh, Good. and more importantly. <laughs> <laughs> I have a pretty big announcement. I'm actually uh, stepping away from the podcast as I no longer need any financial resources from this show because I am being supplied <laughs> purely and totally by Jimmy Grant, who um, scored again and earned me another $100 from Jason. Yeah, the Jimmy Graham versus Will Disley, who gets the next touchdown bet, has not worked out well. The question is... You're darn right I'm willing to put it back <laughs> up there. Let's go again. Wait, hold on, though. Are we going a hundo or are you going double or nothing? I, mean, I, think, I think one is good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll do another okay. hundred. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, 200. Let's go. <laughs> I'm part of the bet, too. Yeah, but you're... Yeah, but you, you have know nothing to lose, win. and you know who's, you know who's going to catch the next touchdown. Okay. All right. Jimmy, also, uh, for, for the record, Jimmy Graham's uh, his line... Was one for one for one for one hundred for one hundred. Yes, sir. And I Tyler Conklin had a nice game too. And without Adam Thielen for a few weeks, Conklin yeah. might be a higher ceiling play. Conk, uh, conk, baby. And just <laughs> the uh, can we get that one? <laughs> just showing how you know the the touchdowns in fantasy football they're fun, but <laughs> what is this story? It, Jimmy Graham is currently the tight end eight. <laughs> on the week. Oh, I thought you meant on the year. No, 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 no. Just uh, the tight end eight on the week. One for one. And for he's one. one for, he caught one pass for one yard. It's just it. It's a little silly. Have you guys seen? Uh, I'm I'm noticing that Trey Lance is currently trending today on Twitter. Oh, is he? Yeah, 49ers fans questioning why they brought him in not to take over for starter Jimmy Garoppolo. I 100 uh, percent agree with that. And look, and Garoppolo has been. He has been a very competent quarterback. Um, I saw somebody say, "Hey, man, if you had started Trey Lance, they could be six and six right now." They they could, but which, you're a, which they are. But if you were six and six with your rookie, who is who is quote the future of the franchise, that's far better than six and six with a with a lame duck quarterback. I agree. I yeah. don't know if they'd be six and six. I don't. I don't know if they would either. It'll be an exciting end of the year if they, you know, we said it was going to come down to wins and losses. If they went on a big losing streak, the change was going to happen. It hasn't. I don't think they're out of the playoffs no, yet, though. No, they're still no. very much alive in the picture. All right, let's talk duds. Pooped in his big boy pants. Oh, guess who's back? Uh, Alex Smith, 15 for 29 back. for 184. Back again. Let's see what you did there. Yeah, Patrick Mahomes. Oh, no. Oh, no. I traded Mahomes midway through the year yep. for Justin Herbert in a lot. And I'll be honest, it was hard to part with Mahomes. Like, he's been. Well, the beginning of the season, the first four weeks, he was on fire. He looked like the Mahomes of always. But now, what do you do? I I do not know. Let me let me give you his last five home games so that you can shake. Quarterback thirteen, quarterback seventeen, quarterback twenty two, quarterback twenty six, quarterback nineteen. Yep. Um <laughs> I was I was looking yep. I, I was looking it up. So since week five, which is like that was the first game where he was outside of the top twelve against Buffalo, he is he is still the quarterback eleven. That's because of his, and that's because he has a performance where he was the overall number one. But goodness gracious, what you have, you have to be terrified moving forward into the fantasy playoffs with Mahomes. There is a parallel to be made, in my opinion, to discussions about like 
tight ends that can go nitro for you on the week and comparing it to what Mahomes represents at quarterback, right? On any given week, Patrick Mahomes can win you the week. And not every quarterback can go score 40, 50 points. Just like George Kittle or uh, I was, you know, we were talking about Kyle Pitts having a ceiling of 160 yards. Patrick Mahomes right now is a player that you are probably putting into your lineup and you are crossing your fingers and toes. Mm Mm-hmm. And hoping that you get a big week, but you can't count on it anymore this year. No, I mean, if you think about the, uh, being a quarterback one, a top 12 quarterback on a week as your standard for success, and really you you should always have a quarterback one. It, that doesn't even mean you had a winning quarterback against your opponent. If you're top 12, you're just saying you played one of the 12 that should have been played that week. And over the last nine weeks, he's only been that level two times. He has pretty much been someone that has lost you games. So let me let me ask you the question. Tom Brady or Mahomes rest of the season, you're going to go Brady. Yes. Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, those guys, you're going them over uh, Mahomes, right? I think you are, yeah. Kyler Murray. Yeah, oh, for, oh sure. for sure. Dak Prescott. No. That one I think really? I Really? That one I, th- I think that's my line too. Really? Yeah. I, I, I think Dak is awesome. He can have yeah. unbelievable games, but this isn't saying I would take that Dak. this isn't saying that Mahomes can't also have I mean, if you look at the ceiling of both of these guys, when they both go out and put up a good game, I think Mahomes' ceiling is higher. Um No, yeah. I would I would take Dak. Okay. Kirk, Kirk Cousins rest of the season or Mahomes? Mahomes. I'd take Mahomes. Matthew Stafford. Yeah, th- this is where that's where Mahomes. my line was yeah. is I think you named all the quarterbacks I would take over Mahomes rest of way. But when you when you did name Kyler, I I don't think there's anyone I would take over Kyler rest of season. Like Brady, sure. Josh Allen, he is Herbert. fully healthy and so is Hopkins. Yeah, so I I mean he he should be the quarterback one rest of now, season. Now is there a risk? Sure. If they end up if they end up closing it out and locking down the number 1 seed? I don't think that they because there's only one number 1 seed. I don't think they're going to lock him up two weeks ahead before the end of the season. So fantasy championships should be the second to last week in week 17. So I don't see that as a risk. Running back duds. Well, actually, let me let me give you some more quarterbacks. Dak was one that was a dud. Lamar. What's I mean, QB 11, but the the offense right now. I mean, QB 11. Yeah, but that's not Lamar that you want. Um, Under 20 fantasy points. For the last three games for Lamar Jackson, Rashad Bateman did not catch a pass. Mark Andrews, when he's targeted, you are flipping a coin on whether that ball is <laughs> intercepted right now. They have scored 19, 16, 16, and 10 points over the last four weeks. They have not hit 20 points as a team in over a month. And now the question is, they don't have the recipe anymore, right? You don't have... The defense, they just lost Marlon Humphrey probably mm-hmm. for the year. Their secondary was already giving up a million points. Yeah, you can't run on them, whatever. You're giving up more yards per game with that secondary than any team in football. You just made Big Ben look all right. I mean, that's what just happened with Baltimore. And, and that is insulting. That is difficult to do. Teams am, have tried. I am offended. Like, I am personal. I watched and I was like, this hurts me as a person. Because Big Ben looks so good, um, so that's that's where their defense is. But isn't and that now good? you lost? That's why they went for two. By the way, I mean they went for two because they didn't have cornerbacks. Yeah. They just yeah, I I didn't disagree with the the decision. Sorry, Jason, you were asking. No, I I I would have done the same thing. Um, I just wish they didn't because I really needed overtime more <laughs> fantasy points. But um, it, I I would say that the loss of Marlon Humphrey and and what's going on with their defense means good things for Lamar going forward. More shootouts, more necessary. Um, you know, they 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 were a uh, Mark Andrews catch at the end from winning this game, um, you know, turnovers, with only giving though, up 20 points. Turnovers are a real problem for him when he's been pushed into that situation. Yeah, his his interception, he look, he brought it down for fro, uh, from four to be fair to Lamar, to just one interception this week. But it <laughs> was I mean, a- atrocious. It was a full fadeaway. I'm just going to throw this ball in the end zone, and and hopefully Mark Andrews comes down with it. And no, it was directly to the Steelers. The last four weeks, 
the projection would be 25 touchdown passes and 34 interceptions over the last four weeks spread out. Uh, Derek Carr, <laughs> no good. Yeah. Mike, I, I told you, you can't do it. You can't, <laughs> can't put him on car. any sort of pedestal. Mm -mm. He cannot handle the spotlight. James Robinson was a disaster. Eight for 24, fumbled out for 20 plays. Um, Urban Meyer said the benching was about an injury, not a fumble. Sure. Yeah, Urban. right. That's no, why I, he went I, back in the game. Yeah, he would. I believe it because I think he barely played. I mean, this was a game where a perfect storm of failure for you. You didn't know if he was playing until the last minute. Right, but he also played like at the very end of the game too. So that, I mean, th those two statements do not. Yeah, when you're correlate. when the game is out of hand and it's over, if you're worried about an injury, you pull the player out. Yeah, Zeke. Thursday game, yeah. we've talked a lot about him already. Mark Ingram, 10 for 28, didn't do much. Miles Gaskin, 15 for 44. Uh, still had 17 opportunities, but the fire was squelched. Yeah. And then uh, Boston Scott and Daryl Henderson. Daryl Henderson was technically active. Uh, we knew that he was going to be a game-time decision. We knew that Sony was going to get the majority of the work. I hope that means you benched him. Yeah, the Henderson one, honestly, that was – expected it was Sunday morning we're not optimistic he's going to play and then the report was you know he'll be active but Sony's the guy so it was we knew to bench him the Boston Scott one uh that one that one's a little bit more difficult of he was highly questionable coming into the game but with the way that the team had handled Boston Scott versus uh Kenneth Gainwell it seemed like they would force Boston Scott into a role but Gainwell was on the field, and Gainwell was productive. What do you do with that backfield moving forward? They run the ball a ton. I still like Boston Scott, but coming out of the bye week, you sure. could have Howard and Gainwell and Boston Scott as a three-headed monster for the rest of the season. I, I'm not I'm not playing with it that much. I mean, I if you have to rely on this, then you're probably not in the playoffs. Uh, so I would imagine that this is a – tier of running back that you're only throwing in your lineup if a matchup is great and trying to get the right guy going forward you got a bye week the Washington football team and the Giants which early in the season that seemed like oh great now it doesn't seem that way both of those defenses have rebounded to what we thought they were going to be coming into the season and you don't have clarity of which running back it's going to be so I'm not yeah but what if you had to pick one because there are a Howard. lot of people with injuries See, I'm Boston Scott. I, all the I way. would I would be Boston Scott as well. I think he'll be healthy coming out Mike's of the bye. Yeah. If Sanders is out, I would expect Scott to be the guy up. Wide receiver duds. Tyreek two for twenty two. Yeah, the, the the Broncos, they're playing good D. They are, and they, I mean, for the most part, they shut down the Kansas City offense. Terry McLaurin, three for twenty two. Yeah. He's going to be an interesting name for our truth episodes coming up. What is the truth? Uh, inconsistent this year, only four games inside the top 30. Four games through 12 weeks inside the top 30 is not – that's a that's a bust year. Oh, for sure. sure. I mean, he's, he's let you down more often than not, but you watch him on the field, he looks good. I think the truth is – this is a <laughs> The dude, what now? The truth <laughs> is uh, this is a guy who needs a better quarterback. He's also been hurt. He's had some games where he's banged up, played through injury. He will be an interesting topic for next draft season, mm -hmm. as will Jamar Chase. Eight yeah. targets, five for 52. Hasn't been inside the top 24 since week seven. That Jamar, is a good run. This game should have been six for 100 and a touchdown. Jamar Chase was great. The problem was he was hit on a bomb pretty early in the in the game, down the sideline, hits him in his hands. You think it's a 50-yard touchdown. Yep. Instead, he bobbles it up, turns into an interception, drive over, Game gets out of hand pretty early. It was a kind of wild play, but you are you are fingertips away from a monster great game. So I, I don't worry here about Jamar Chase personally. I well, do think early he's in the year he he's, wasn't just a fingertip away from a good game. It was a fingertip away from a great game, and you always got a good game. Yeah, I mean, I, I we we preached this early and in the middle of the season. Wide receivers are inconsistent. Whenever you've got a guy who is really great just on fire more often than not they are not going to keep doing that for the rest of the season because no wide receivers do this year there's what one cooper cup mm -hmm. and that's it yeah but you still have a debate to be had here i mean saying all wide receivers are inconsistent doesn't solve what jamar is for your team i think jamar do you view is him a, as a one yeah because i, I don't i don't know one. if he i don't know if you can count on him as that that's, I mean, that's fair. It's been 
he hasn't been, you know, a, a top 24 wide receiver in the last several games. Um, but I do think that he has obviously the talent, the capability. We've seen it on the field. Okay, so if, if Jamar is not yeah, a but one. T. Higgins then... was not healthy early in the year. Oh, I love T. Higgins. So yeah. T. Higgins is playing great football. Jamar, Jamar Chase didn't have 28 carries going to Joe Mixon. Like his last five game pace is 650 yards okay. on the year. So question, if Jamar is not a one to you, what is DK Metcalf? DK Metcalf is... Because it's the exact same story of was on fire early and has like not only been bad, he like he is actively hurting your fantasy team for the last month. Yeah, I don't I don't know if he hurts you this week, but he hurts you the three weeks before. I, I, I was optimistic about Russ's play in this game. And there were deep shots taken to, to DK that just barely missed. So I am I'm certainly worried. I don't know okay. if you can count on him as one. But I think that for both of those players, you could, you know, you could have both of them perform for you down the stretch. Houston, I like Houston next week. I like Detroit in championship week for DK Metcalf. I can't imagine you're not gonna bench either player. It's no. Just, it's it's it, tough. Yep. It's really tough. I have trust me, I'm going into the fantasy playoffs with Metcalf on one of my teams and I have no expectations. Yeah, since, I've just laid them down. Since <laughs> Halloween, which was week eight, he is the wide receiver seventy one. Yeah. Bring back Gino. Uh, Amari Cooper, <laughs> two for 41. Uh, we discussed it on the Friday show. Yeah, Darn I mean, Mooney, uh, five for 27. I mean, who was uh, – Jason, were you the one that was real hesitant about him? He yeah, I, I didn't like Darnell Mooney going in. I said I really wanted to look elsewhere, didn't want to play him in this matchup. That's and that's call. great to have before the game because that means you don't get down on the player. We knew it was going to be rainy. It was. We knew it was a tough matchup. It was. We knew he's been efficient on lower volume or at least reception-wise, not necessarily target-wise. So I'm back in on Mooney going forward. Um, you know, I see that he's in Green Bay next week. I haven't checked the weather. Maybe it's a super awful, windy, snowy game, and I'll, I'll have some of the same thoughts. But I'm not down on Darnell Mooney from this one game. You need to talk me off the ledge on this next guy because, um, look, I don't he, – he, he looks like the Kyle Pitts of the wide receiver position right now. Sure. Devontae Smith – Two for 15, say whatever you want about Gardner Minshew, just go ahead and glance back to week five. From week five on, he had the two big weeks, but both of them were the touchdown weeks, right? It was five for, uh, what is it, five for 116 and one in week nine, and then scored twice in week 10. But my goodness, since week five, it has been really hard to trust Devontae Smith. Um, Last three weeks, 36th, 75th, 68th. I, he only played 62% of snaps this week. I mean, I watched the game, and there were lots of plays he wasn't even on the field. Like, I don't understand what to do with him moving forward. I don't know which weeks. He was on my bench for those weeks. Put him back in your lineup, and he disappeared. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with that. Yeah, and, and game script-wise, against the Jets with a big lead, I think that's why he wasn't needed or utilized that much in this game I think in the end what you have to rely on is he is talented um, he has the capability and the talent and the opportunity to go out and have a big week we've seen it a couple of times but he is a rookie on a team that I don't think we're confident is going to come out and be good on a weekly basis so you're playing with fire um, but he is much you know I have much more confidence in a Devonta Smith than the weekly dart throws of the big play, you know, the 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 rugs and DJXs and, you know, bomb touchdown machines. So, yeah, I mean, he's going to be inconsistent. He's going to have some bad games. Um, this is what you get when you have a rookie. I, you know, we talked about Jamar Chase. They're just, they just can't be good every week. Okay, so moving forward. Moving forward, you got the bye week this week and then – remember this was someone that you wanted to target for the matchups mm -hmm. early in the season we were talking about uh Jalen Hurts and Devonta Smith they get Washington twice in the playoffs juicy number one best to target matchup but is it anymore I'm scared out of my mind to play Devonta Smith rest of the year yeah I mean that Washington been very good yeah these games are slugfests with Washington anymore Hollywood was only five for 55. I'm not pushing the button for a, a dud. Uh, Rashad Bateman was a full goose. Claypool, 
just two for 52 on three targets, and he's only scored one time this year. He had 11 touchdowns as a rookie. It was a that's wild a step back year for Claypool. We've seen success, right? I mean, Deontay Johnson's been the pinnacle of success mm -hmm. for this team, even though so you can't just blame Big Ben alone. Yeah, but Claypool, when Rodgers gets there, is going to be outrageously good. Oh, my good. gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Man, I, I wonder, <laughs> and I, I don't have a lot to go on. I just don't know if Claypool's got it upstairs this year. I feel like he almost got full of what happened last year, and the indications that I see on the field from him, he's made mistakes, and, uh, you know, I didn't like seeing him get up and – celebrate down four scores the other day when he caught a big touchdown pass. just didn't make sense to me. Um, but he'll be somebody that you'll be looking at next year saying, what is he? Is, he, is this a uh, post-type sleeper type of thing? Sure. Brandon Cooks, three for 38. The ship has sailed there. Yeah. I don't know who's quarterback. Um, Brandon Ayuk, disappointment, yes. three for 55 on six targets. Nothing. And that you hoped for in this game entirely at the end of the game it wasn't garbage time necessarily it was right. important uh work but if you had a uke in a lineup you're three quarters of the game going he's goosed yeah and, there, and you were hoping you know no debo that you would get some of what kittle had you wanted shanahan game planning a yes. into the system and he didn't do he it. game plans he debo in, and he game planned kittle in and he clearly said Ayuk, go be a wide receiver. We're not scheming things for you. You're just going to get yours if you get yours. Uh, tight end duds, Travis Kelsey, three for 27, another bummer game. You never saw these when Mahomes was at his pinnacle. Now you have the possibility that Kelsey doesn't give you a big game. He's still the best tight end out there. Zach Ertz, just one for 10 against Chicago. 15 pass attempts by Kyler. That was the story of the game. You didn't have a lot of opportunities. Yeah. It, moving forward, are you, do you still have confidence to start? I think Ertz. any game that you expect to be competitive, you should feel okay playing Zach Ertz. Yeah, I would play him this coming week against the Rams. Okay. And yeah, uh, Mark Andrews four for fifty on nine targets. Not worried there. Seven targets, four for forty-eight for Kyle Pitts. Wasn't, Basically, didn't even score in the second half. Yeah, it seemed. I think all of his receptions were in the first half. Uh, if, yep. If I'm rem remembering the game correctly, but <laughs> like, what do you do? I, I guess we ask this question every single week. Uh, but are you just continuing to put him in the lineup even though his highest finish in the last six games is the tight end 12? He hasn't scored. He well, can't score touchdowns. And this coming week. One on the year. This coming week will be Carolina off the bye where we saw last time they put Stephon Gilmore on him. Sure. Pretty much shut him down. So I, I think you look elsewhere this coming week. It, it really is amazing that he can be the tight end nine on the season with a single touchdown in a, on a position that that runs the show, right? Mm -hmm. He's scoring. And then you had Pat Fryermuth, who's like, hey, I don't want to pass you this week mm -hmm. yeah, as a rookie tight end. Could have done so much, Pat. Um, the, the Muth did not produce. Mm. <laughs> the Muth was reduced. Oh, no. Oh, no. And the Muth was a uh, recluth. A recluth. Oh, recluth. Okay. Yes. Um, three for 26 for the Muth. Uh, huge disappointment, so. He got, yeah, he got a two-point conversion. That's true. Okay. That's worth two points. All right. You looked at me with such excitement. When oh, you said I mean, that. I was very well, happy I mean, when he got that. Yeah, three for 26 is plus two. Could be worse. And then Foster three Moreau. Three for 46. Uh, um, <laughs> sure. Foster Moreau, uh, Australian for bust. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one, one, for, one for 34 uh, on the ground. He, yep. Yeah, it, it was very unfortunate. We didn't get the target volume. Uh, and also unfortunate on the one reception it was one defender i know one def one broken tackle away from from a, like a 50 yard house call um i know we said this last week but stop throwing the ball to gerald everett <laughs> i mean you want to talk about hurting your team you threw the ball six times he caught four of them he fumbled two of Did them. You, I don't know if you know this. I saw this reported yesterday. Wow. They actually tied his shoelaces together before the game. I mean, here's the thing. He fumbled twice, hurt your team on the seven targets. But, six targets. Or, sorry, six targets. Well, I was confused because he got seven yards on the six targets. Like, it fumble. 
It's not like he had 50 yards on his four receptions. He had seven yards and then fumbled it twice. This team was leaning on Gerald Everett in previous weeks, and their solution for that problem was bringing in Adrian Peterson. I mean, get me some Will Disley touchdowns, <laughs> Russ. <laughs> that's what this is about. Oh, Big Montana. Yeah. Um, what is the bet again? Uh, who's going to score the next touchdown? Okay. The first. And how much is the bet? It's $100. $100. All right. What if I told you? That Will Disley and Gerald Everett had identical yardage. <laughs> I would ask who had more <laughs> targets to get there. They would both have outscored, had more yards than Jimmy Graham. I know that. <laughs> we want to thank pristineauction.com for supporting the show. Right now, there's an auction for a Taysom Hill signed Saints mini helmet. It's up there for $31. The DeAndre Hopkins signed jersey is up there for $21. They end tonight. So go check them out at pristineauction.com. There are hundreds of daily auctions. Use the code BALLERS. BALLERS. And what do you get? You get ten dollars. Very nice. And and uh, we of had credit. someone we had someone question where you get that. That's when you sign up. Yes. When you sign up and you're registering, you put it in that process. And it's then a they... registration code, right? Exactly. Okay. Um, tomorrow waivers, streamers, and Oof. the results of tonight's weathery Monday night football game. You can find our community. Join the foot dot com. Come be a part of the foot clan. And you will enjoy fantasy football every single week. That's our promise to you. Good luck finishing off the weekend. Foot Clan, we'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.